to be their beloved or they will pull her by the hair and they will slay her. And that was the request. So what lady said is, uh, I had, I have actually got a boon that I will only marry the person who I have defeated. So she openly challenged Shumma and Nishumma to come back and attack her. And as you know, Devi, who is Mahamaya, who puts the whole world into delusion, deluded even Shumba and Shumba thinking that Devi is such an ordinary person and they can defeat her. So they started sending Asura by Asura. Like for example, Chanda and Bhutta, the most powerful wrestlers in the cosmos. Uh, Raktabija, uh, Asura, from which even one drop of blood falls on the ground, a new demon will raise. And uh, Mahishasura, the one who is as fierce as a bull. And all these demons, one by one, they send to Devi. But as you know, Devi Parashakti, she just, uh, there is actually in the shloka, there is, all this is recorded in the Devi Mahabharata. And uh, it is actually said that Devi just said boom by, she saying one syllable, uh, Raktapija just went into ashes. And uh, Devi was just, uh, so, so ecstatic to see how uh, they are just deluded by their own uh, karma, their own uh, desire they are having and they are not able to realize that the one they are really facing is Parashakti herself. And uh, that is when uh, demon by demon they came and they liberated them and at last uh, even Shumbha and Vishumbha came and uh, they also got liberated by Devi and that is when the whole celebration happens uh, on the 10th day uh, of uh, Navaratri where she kills all the demons and uh, she has victory over uh, this whole story. That day is known as Vijayadasi, the day of victories. And you will see that even in your life also that these kind of elements happen, the demons or some negativities or your patterns will take over you and slowly slowly Things that were colorful aren't so colorful anymore. Things that were manifest in history weren't manifest in anymore. It is only the grace of the Lord and the grace of Parashakti that can bring more light into our lives, to bring the color back into our lives. When it comes to the story of Devi, it is written in one of the most sacred scriptures known as the Devi Mahan. It is also known as Chenni. And Chenni is the name, also the name of the Devi also that manifests, who manifests with many arms and triumphs over the evil, over the negativity of the world. This same scripture is considered to be of the status of the Vedas. Vedas are the supreme scriptures of Buddhism that we un have undying loyalty to. They are the very word of Bhagavan Sadashiva. They are very word of him in his ethereal form. And they are the rules of our scripture. They are what we adhere to without any doubt. And the Mahanagyam is considered to be Veda in itself. Its first part, second part, and third part. It is a total of 13 chapters that describe clear, powerful Sanskrit mantras that describe the story of the and when they are recited, it is a manifestation of that very happening in front of us. So how are they manifested? Can you try with that? So what you what you experience when you do uh, when we do well, the scripture describes one particular ritual in a very detailed way. That ritual is known as Chendi Homa. Homa. In Hinduism the rishis have used raw elements to worship cosmos and to bring the energies of the gods into a manifestation, whether it may be wealth, abundance, health, or excellence in life, or to destroy the enemies, whatever it may be to manifest in the life, the Vedic rishis have described and formulated rituals that we can perform to manifest the way we want our lives. So. For this ritual, they have made for this story to 
elaborate and celebrate the greatness of this story, the rishis have created a ritual known as Chendi Homa. So we worship the elements. And how are they worshipped? What is Homa? Homa is a fire ritual. A ritual where it is not fire. Cosmos itself is worshipped in the form of fire. It means it is no longer a flame. It is a living entity that will respond to you. So when we invoke Devi in the Agni, she lives in the fire. And then there is the water element also. Devi is invoked inside the water in a pot kept throughout the nine days and is worshipped and Devi is invoked in that. Cosmos Parashakti is invoked in the Kalisha. So she is existent in the water element as well. Then there is the Homakunda itself. That is the pot or the, uh, the uh, pit, the fire pit that the fire is invoked in. That itself is a deity made of the mud and the earth itself, the earth element. It is made to be in the form of a deity containing the fire. So it is the earth element that we worship. The worship of the Homakunda is a preliminary ritual to the Chendi Homa itself. So earth is worshipped. Of course, many have experienced the power of Sanskrit mantras to be infusing tremendous amounts of prana inside you and inside the environment around you. There is living proof of this and many of you experience this when just a mantra is chanted in, and you have the listening for it. Or just it is heard or even if you chant, you see the difference in your system. In that way, when the mantra is chanted, the air element, the air element that surrounds us is infused with tremendous amounts of pranic energy where Devi is present and worshipped in the air itself. And of course, the ritual is done by the priests who hold the highest devotion to Devi to be able to see her in all of these forms and see her in their inner space, in their experience of oneness. And in that space, Devi is worshipped as in the space of ether, in the space element. Through all the five rituals, Parashakti is worshipped at in the Chandi Homa. Chandi is invoked and worshipped. But here, in the Ityanadeshwara Parashiva Devasthanam, we will be doing a Chandi Homa and we will be done by the priests of the Nityananda Gurukul. Maharaj, go ahead and explain to us who is going to be performing the Homa. As Raja Maharaj told, the ones who are performing the Homa in all these nine days are uh, our own Balasans of the Nityananda Gurukul. And uh, the Balasans have such a space where, like how the Balasans read the Akashic records, same way, when they do a ritual, any ritual they do, they can see the divine inside, whether it's a fire, whether it's a metal deity, a stone deity, a kalasha, the water pot, they can actually see the deity. And when they offer the oblations, the sacred herbs, the materials to the deity, it is because they can visualize, they can see the deity present there when they say, Ava Hito Bhava, let the deity come inside the fire, they can see the deity just landing in the fire. So when they see the deity, anything they offer to the fire goes directly to, uh, in this case, Goddess Parashakti and that, um, the Homa benefit multiplies 100 times as the priests are being authentic to uh, both the Shastras and the Bhavana, the experience of the Acharya when he offers the oblation. So this is a very big aspect thanks to uh, Swamiji Paramsanityananda. He initiated the Balasans and therefore they are able to see the deity in the fire. So that is a huge uh, benefit of offering the Chandiyama here at our Ityanandeshwara Para, Para, Parabashiva Devalayam. And uh, there is also another part when even the third day Balasans are chanting the mantras. So as Swamiji beautifully tells, when the mantra is chanted from the navel center and when the visualization meets, when the visualization visualization meets the verbalization and the mantra just comes out, anything the person desires, whether it is prosperity, whether it is a breakthrough in relationships, whether it is a breakthrough in health, anything which the person desires immediately becomes reality. And that is the power of the sankalpa we will be making. 
So in the Chendi Homa, there are so many elements. We have to explain that when we offer things in, into the fire, the scriptures describe exactly the quantity and the, and the quality also of the uh, elements that needs to be described, where the, 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 the material should be acquired, at what time of the year the material should be acquired. Everything the Shastra describes very clearly and gives that as a, um, as a way to procure the items. And when we do the Chendi Homa, it is directly from the guidance of Swamiji because Swamiji is very compassionate and very passionate about and very meticulous about the Chendi Homa and its procedures. What we do is we don't rely on any priest or anybody to dictate how the Chendi Homa should be done. We take the source book itself, the original Shastra, we take it, open it up, read the translations and understand how much and how much, how, uh, what type of uh, items acquire and we acquire these and offer the Chendi Homa and from everything to when we, as soon as the Agni is invoked when as soon as uh, Chendi is invoked inside the fire the whole space we will see is completely transformed it is completely in not we are not in any no we are no longer in this loka anybody who is witnessing and being a part of this ritual will be with Devi in Devi's loka they will not be in this plane of existence because in its experience in witnessing the Chendi Homa, just one is just transported to another dimension in its experience. It is in a beautiful space under the feet of Devi Chendi herself. And also another beautiful part of uh, the rituals we'll be doing here is like we are human. So when we connect to another human, we feel a connection because many people are not uh, able to connect to a deity at first and uh, the Rishis and uh, Parashakti have been so compassionate to us, Devi Parashakti has been so compassionate to us, they've even put in a ritual where we will be invoking that same energy of Parashakti in physical human bodies and uh, that is another beautiful ritual we can witness. It's called the Kumari Kanya and Sumangali Puja where we'll be invoking various forms of Devi, yeah. whether it is Meenakshi, Visalakshi, Kamakshi and all these beautiful forms of Devis inside physical human people and they will be done puja to and it is said in the scriptures that when Devis invoke in the physical form because there is a difference between the physical plane and the etheric plane so when you offer a physical item to a physical form of Devi it acquires tremendous benefit in both uh, the person who is offering and the whole space around the Homa and that is the conclusion of the ritual where we finally we uh, please Devi and uh, Raja Maharaj, you can tell about uh, what comes next, the Darbar, the beautiful offerings, different offerings to Devi will be doing. Yes, and one more point about the uh, Suhasini and Smangli Puja and the Pujas that we do to the actual people. See, many of you will be able to un understand that it is not just the deities that we will worship but very much the forms of the God are very much living with us and around us. The people that we take for granted and the people around us that we, we, we live with, we tend to become in a relationship with the God, they're just another human being. But hence we don't see and recognize the possibility of them radiating the divine energy or divine uh, powerful space of Paramashiva. So when we worship the Devi or worship the Devi in the form of, uh, of a Kanya, of a young girl or of a mother, or of a young boy, when we worship them and see the deity in them, we'll be able to recognize that she does not exist in some plane, as Maharaj was saying, but she exists very much in our lives, in the form of my brother, in the form of my sister, and in the form of my mother. She lives with me. And that is the way that the rituals beautifully give somebody the experience that it is not in one place the cosmos exists, and the cosmos is available to you, but it is in many forms that she is available to you and accessible to you. Hence, it gives you the experience that everything is auspicious and everything is sacred. And yes, Maharaj, we do a traditional dance as an offering to Devi. The traditional dances that are done, the arts and the songs that are sung are as an offering to Devi. Like how we do the every day the Uttamottama Seva to uh, Paramashiva, Nityanandeshwara and the temple, the scriptures describe the offering of a Darbhar to Devi as she graces us
for the evening for that day of Navaratri. So we will be offering various uh, dances, various forms of dances. The Rudrikanyas will be displaying various types of songs and traditional dances for Devi and for us also to know the story of Devi and experience Devi and Shakti on these auspicious nights of Navaratri. So you can tune in and you can even visit us, be here for the events and get to know how it is to live with Shakti for nine nights. Chandi Homa is an opportunity for Sanghas and for people all around the world to make breakthroughs in their lives. They have patterns where they are held up behind limitations that they put on themselves, whether it may be their lower self-image or whether it may be that they are not able to uh, find the confidence to be able to make a breakthrough in their life. Devi and her grace brings those effortlessly into your life, brings those into your life as a gift, as a prashada from our connection and our worship with them. Can we ask questions? Yeah. Anybody have questions? Maybe we can go for three questions and then we can have a break. Um, special, any extra benefits of like Homa, anything like a, you know, I know uh, Chandi is very powerful. Anything extraordinary that we can... Question? Anybody can do the Anybody? Yes. Anyone can offer this homa, whether uh, it is for them, it is for uh, their near and dear ones, uh, whether it is for their beloved ones. Anyone can offer the ritual, and uh, it doesn't have to be. Anyone can offer uh, because Devi Parashakti is for everybody. Anyone who has intention and uh, the urge to worship Devi or uh, for Devi to bless their lives and uh, remove any pattern that they have inside themselves. This is one of the best ways and very powerful way actually to get the immediate result. Uh, it is said in the the Rahasya, the, the scriptures in the Devi, that the result of the Chandi Homa, even when the, the thought of offering any puja, the Chandi Homa to Devi, materializes the benefit and result of what they are praying for. Not just when you do the ritual, before you do it, even when you think of doing the ritual, immediately the benefit just manifests. So that is the power of Chandi. As I already told, uh, this form of Devi is very ferocious. That means it, she is almost like uh, Kala Bhairava, both ferocious but ever compassionate. So any wish, any desire, anything you want to fulfill will get immediate uh, results and the fruit of the Homa will be immediately uh, bestowed for all of you. Maharaj, yes. there's uh, something, some mantra you said, the struggles you can only chant here. Yes, and, mm, the, that's three extra rahasyas, special. the three secrets of uh, Devi and the worship of Devi is there as a part of the Chandi Homa, where Devi tells the secrets of which how one can uh, get the benefits bestowed on, onto themselves. And the secret of each mantra chanted in the Devi Mahatmyam and the most powerful mantra, which is the Navakshari mantra, which very few people know, is one of the very powerful mantras of Devi, which even chanting once brings so much of benefit and uh, bestows any desire immediately in your lives. And uh, they, uh, like the whole Chandi Homa, like how Raja Mahesh was saying, is a very powerful ritual. And uh, it is not done very regularly, whether it is here or anywhere outside in the world as this ritual is very powerful and uh, the sanctity of the ritual is maintained and as the story happens like Raja Maharaj told the constellations align in these nine days those are the nine days where we will be offering this ritual to Devi so that is a very very special ritual we are offering for just for Navaratri and one of the most uh, we, we will be sharing the Shastras and the benefit but the reality of this Homa was experienced by Swamiji and the Sangha itself. In 2000, when Swamiji came out, came and, and wanted to start his avataric mission, the first public event that Swamiji did was a Chandi Homa, a grand Chandi Homa that he did 
in uh, Rajarajeshwari temple in his hometown, in the t temple town of Tiruvannamalai, where there is a hill that people walk around. And on the path around the hill, there is a Rajarajeshwari temple that asked Swamiji for assistance to help the, to help the temple develop and to propagate the temple and the people who and the devotees of the temple. Swamiji did a grand Chandihoma for them with his pure space as he was just came out of his enlightenment and just uh, manifested a Chandihoma out of thin air. He was just one sadhu, one boy who had the knowledge of Chandi, the bhakti towards Devi and the charisma and the dedication to inspire so many around him to believe that yes, Devi will help you. And she did. The temple was able to experience tremendous and exponential growth in their in their activities. So many people came to the temple because of the Chandi Homa that was performed, and they were so grat they felt so much gratitude to Swamiji that they presented their very Devi Meru, which is a three-dimensional form of the Sri Chakra that is kept inside the Devi temples in a very secretive way. Nobody will ever, even ever be able to see this, but they presented that ancient artifact. And the ancient thing, they, not just an artifact, but something they worship every day, they presented it to Swamiji and it is with him still. And that temple, and their website also has posted that Swamiji has come, did done this homa and helped the temple so much and they have presented him with this Devi Meru. So it is a, it, it, it is a, a, a career boosting and a, a breakthrough for you, for the community that you live in, for the family that you are and for the Sangha that you belong to. So, that it is a, a breakthrough event and something that comes very rarely, as Maharaj says, as it comes only on these nine nights of Devi Navaratri. And uh, the best way of offering this is, uh, like how Raja was telling, as a Sangha, when if you want to build your Sangha, means if you want to build a temple community around you, uh, you can build it by just all of you taking a Sankalpa of wanting to have a beautiful Sangha and a temple for Mahasada Shiva, Paramashiva and Parashakti and with that intention when you offer the Chandiyoma, Devi will immediately bestow you with the result of your Sankalpa, the temple itself and a beautiful Sangha, the community around you which constantly enriches yourself and the whole world around you and your community. So this is a very very uh, great opportunity for you to take this and build your Sangha all around the world. And we have got intentions already from many Sangha such as the Dubai Sangha, the Dubai Nityananda Sangha and the uh, Australia Nityananda Sangha and Canada Nityananda Sangha to use Chandi Devi as a catalyst for their Sangha to grow exponentially, exponentially and for the temple to happen in all their cities and uh, there is so many benefits of just uh, building a temple for Paramashiva and Parashakti and that can easily be fulfilled by just offering this Chandi Homa and having that Sankalpa with yourself and the Sangha around you. Beautifully Swamiji says very very beautifully he says in the, in the recent satsang he said that Sadashiva is not waiting for you to do puja but he's waiting for to respond to your puja. So in the same way Chandi Devi is not waiting for you to do a worship to her this is not a transaction, but it is a way to tap into the energy that will be very much available to you on those days and see the, the how she manifests in your life. That is the gift of this, is to see how miraculously life will be after being able to witness Chandi's, uh, witness Chandi's blessings in your life. That is the grace of Devi. The grace of Devi is to only and finally to know that all of this that we have is simply a gift from Paramashiva, a gift that has all been given to us. It is the highest and most beautiful space to be in, to know that whatever it is I have, whether it is that you manifest Shaktis or whether it is that you manifest so much of wealth, you know it is a gift from Devi herself. So it is a prasada of Devi that we must really cherish after we offer this Chandi Homa. And now immediately, if any of you are interested in offering the Chandi Homa, it's going to happen from October 10th to October 19th, the auspicious nine days of Navaratri. And every day we are having uh, Chandi Homa here 
in our Nityanandeshwar Parma Shiva Devalayam. And we will be able to offer Chandi Homa in your name or if you come as a Sangha, in your Sangha's name. And, if you, uh, and so, if you want to uh, immediately jump and uh, offer the Chandi Homa, you can comment on uh, the live video below and contact. Uh, me, myself, or Raja Maharaj, and inbox us in our Nityanandeshwar uh, Paramashiva Devalayam page, and we will immediately respond to you and uh, find a way for you to offer this Chandi Homa. And with that, we. Yes, Maharaj, and uh, Chandi Homa is happening on Navaratri in celebration. Stay tuned for more updates on Chandi Homa and also so many other special events that are happening during the Navaratri celebrations here. Chindi Homas, a grand part of it. Yes, and so we, haven't, we actually haven't told you everything because we want to keep it a surprise. There will be huge deities coming and uh, beautiful deities coming. And uh, so we'll keep that as a surprise for now. And uh, we will be going live the whole day during the nine days. And all of you can tune in and uh, see the grandeur and the grand celebration of our Navarra. Can we have the sharing every day, same time? Yes. Yes. And uh, till Navaratri, you can join us uh, at this time, 8 p.m. IST. And uh, we'll be revealing more and more beautiful facts about Devi and the auspicious celebration of Navaratri. Thank you all. And uh, hope to see you on at Navaratri online and here at Nityan Neshwara Parameshwara Devalayam. Uh, open heart invite to you all. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.